All right, beep, boys, let's do this. First thing first, the name, L-U-I. Secondly, the game. It is the game of bodybuilding, obviously. Thirdly, <laughs> thirdly, the subject yet again. 322 pounds, 13 weeks out. Big Ramy doing a double bicepsies, uh, bicepsies, uh, baby, please, from the back this time around. And it looks rather impressive. It is just humongous. As Phil Heath uh, described him last year, he is ginormous and ginormous he is stay tuned by the way uh, he will send me exclusive pictures uh, in a week meaning uh, he will be 12 weeks out of miss olympia should be a little bit more uh, defined than this picture so they promised me that and i'll have an exclusive eye on them so needless to say i'm going to share that uh, with you guys so uh, a lot of you um, asked me yesterday bro who can we compare him with because he looks like a, a thousand million dollars Let, let's go through the ags uh, baby please 70s baby please can we compare him to the oak arnold schwarzenegger the governor the most known bodybuilder in the world and probably the reason of you uh, rather directly or indirectly knowing bodybuilding is because of this guy right definitely not uh, because of the iron or the pump and iron documentary in 75 but because of his action uh, hero movies that basically put muscle uh, into the map nobody prior to him or since uh, since him actually was able to reproduce that I mean the rock include all the rest are not in the same league but then again this guy was topping more or less 240 245 uh, in his contest uh, shape and he's 6'2". So two different ball games. Uh, by today's standards, we got to confess, Arnold is somehow uh, small in a sense, by ratio. And also, uh, some body parts are just lagging. You know, the back is not that thick. The, the legs uh, were good for his uh, era. And even you can stretch them to the 80s. But with today's wheels, uh, we got to confess, it's not uh, the same ball game. They don't have those kind of peeled glutes with striated, uh, you know, hammies, uh, baby please, uh, and so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, in the 70s, nobody have seen uh, like, you know, uh, quads with uh, diced um, uh, outer head or uh, teardrop until uh, the, uh, the debut actually of Tom Platz, as you guys know. So definitely not. Let's move to the 80s, the same round, baby, please. Brutal Bertil Fox was known as the mass uh, monster of that uh, era. He has some of the craziest arms, uh, you know, traps. Uh, the, 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 the thickness of his chest was absolutely stupendous. I do recall when I was a kid at a poster of this gentleman doing a most muscular pose with his hands on the, on the waist. It was absolutely stupendous. But even him, by today's standards, uh, we moved on. I mean, we, we have gained that. This guy was stopping about 220 in stage. Uh, genetic freak, genetic freak by all measures. But unfortunately, back then, even the candies and the creatine was not as efficient and not as technically advanced as uh, those we have right now. The one called by Mr. Flex Wheeler, uh, sport uh, technology uh, candies uh, baby please so let's move on to uh, the 90s this time around where big Ramy can be why not compared to his fellow national Egyptian may he rest in peace Nasser El Sambari um, he was competing uh, under the flag of Yugoslavia his mom is Yugoslavian and his father is Egyptian thus the name Nasser uh, Al Sambati, uh, which is an Arabic name, of course. This guy is Mr. Uh, Granite, and until today, he has some features that uh, were not reproduced even by Big Ramy. Believe that. From the front, the granitey look he had uh, is something unseen until today. Until today, we don't see this kind of hardness uh, from the front, and he was bringing this package at 283, 283 pounds. So he is a sight. Uh, to be seen uh, from the front he has a weakness he had a weakness which was uh, the back uh, genetically though he's not a monster right if we basically start to cut off body part by body part his arms by today's uh, not by today, even by back then standards are not the 
the craziest in a sense, right? Uh, I guess this picture is more or less, I think it is 1996, right? Why am I saying this? Because his arms were still loyal. In my opinion, in his later years, even at the end of 97, probably he started to experiment with SEOs in the shoulders and in the biceps and it started to show. So this hardness was not that loyal. His forearms were not uh, uh, the craziest, right? He had some trouble actually posing in the side uh, chest and the side triceps because his limbs were not that flexible, right? So he, he, but he saturated, he brought that look. And of course the bubble gut was not dinged back then. It was just okay because it was during the era of Dorian Yates who had a bubble a bubble gut of his own. But should we can we compare him to Big Remy? No, because Big Remy is superior to Nasser as somebody uh, genetically. Uh, crazier wheels, bigger arms, more details uh, in the back and so on. So the only uh, thing that Nasser had uh, on Big Remy is the hardness. He used to break this killer granite look only paralleled and compared to Branch Warren uh, when he was on. But then again, Branch Warren tops at 240. So this guy has like 45 pounds uh, on him, right? So proceed, shall we? Uh, Dorian Yates, why not? Dorian is Mr. Uh, dryness. Uh, this guy was probably the most conditioned Mr. Olympia we, we ever had. But then again, his top shape was about 260 max, 260 last year. Big Ramy came in at 315. Granted, not as hard, but it was not all fat, right? This guy is pretty much uh, shorter than Dorian. Dorian is 511, if I'm not mistaken. Big Ramy is maximum 510. So even uh, Dorian Yates was smoked in that sense. Who do we have left? Um, Ronnie Coleman, Marcus Rule. These guys, uh, both of them probably weighed the same thing. They topped at around 280, 290 maximum. Right, 290, but Ronnie Coleman at 290 was not that conditioned. A lot of people love that version of him in 2003. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, me, I prefer the earlier years in Mr. Olympia of Ronnie Coleman, especially 99. 1999 for me is the epitome of, of Ronnie Coleman. Debatably, uh, 90, uh, 2000 as well, right? And then he became he started to become too big in my in my reckoning right remember that year when even he had some gyno let's discard the gyno for a bit remove the gyno everything was okay his waist was under control the lines was were fine uh, the front lat spread was not uh, torturous in a sense he did not struggle to hold the pose he was happy he was smiling but then again he went into the uh, mass gain and spree but then again some people like that is just fair enough but even these two guys like marcus rule last year um he made a short statement in a, in the airplane uh where he said bro i mean i thought i was big but right now i saw big rammy it's a different league right so big rammy has a little nudge on top of these guys and quite frankly there is only one guy in my reckoning that that can be compared to big rammy specifically from the genetic uh gift standpoint in a sense that dude is this gentleman uh right here from the 90s as well vic richard i repeat vic richard why am i repeating myself because if you guys are only familiar with ifbb pros this guy was never never an ifbb although he had the craziest genetics uh from his era and debatably, arguably, never seen until Big, Big Ramy. I'm not exaggerating. This guy is better, I mean, crazy when it comes to muscularity than uh, Dorian Yates, Ronnie Coleman, Marcus Rule, Nasser, of course. He was just crazy. And he did not, uh, I mean, reach his potential that I guarantee you, right? This was in his later years. This was um, at the beginning. And he was holding off. Why he was holding off? Because this guy was like this in Lee Haney era. Now, compare in your mind, do a little photo collage of Lee Haney's arms compared to these arms right here. So this guy, without even trying, he was already too much muscular for that era. There was no way in hell for him to compete in the IFBB because the standard was Lee Haney, right? Granted, he was aesthetic, 
large lats, uh, you know, beautiful lines, small legs in a sense. The arms are pretty much right now, right now, the Mr. Olympia physique, my friend Jeremy Bondia has bigger arms than Lee Haney, Mr. Olympia eight times in a row. This is how we, uh, the, the game have changed. I guarantee you, I'm not exaggerating, right? I mean, Lee Haney, his arms are not even physique level by today's standards. So this guy was holding off in a sense, not getting the biggest he could because the era was not uh, friendly in a sense, was not friendly for gigantic guys. There was no gigantic guy winning. Lee Haney was first and the second guy, the runner up was Lee Labrada, who was like freaking 190, right? Uh, everybody was applauding a guy who weighs 170, Francis Benfato, right? Uh, Richard Gaspari, all these guys were runner up. They were like below 200, you know what I'm saying? So this guy never pushed it, but look at the chest thickness. This Nigerian guy was not even uh, consuming the proper vitamins in that sense, yet he was growing like crazy. The legs were just too big, so he was discarding them. He was not training like crazy. Probably he never, uh, as far as I recall, he hardly ever touched his calves. And they were this big. Look at the saturation of the front uh, double biceps. It's just slabs of muscle. And he used to have a vacuum in, in certain uh, poses. So by today, if you compare them image to image next to Big Ramy, uh, you can already uh, notice that he was not as conditioned as today. But then again, it was Lee Haney's era. We've never seen uh, peeled glutes back then before Richard Gaspari in, in 1986. I remember him pointing to his glutes saying, bro, does this count? And I was like, no, it doesn't count. I mean, glutes, they should be hidden in the 80s, right? Anyway, uh, these are outdated uh, figures of, of Big Ramy because he reached 315, at least 310 last year probably this year will not reach it but it's a little bit uh heavier right but genetically i will not discard uh vic uh, richard although his back is not as conditioned uh less detailed than big Ramy. can you imagine that big Ramy right now his back is not known as being a strength right now uh, if, you can, if you compare him at least to mr olympia phil heath and kai green in the back double biceps he does not have the same amount of details, the ridges, the 3D uh, coming at you. But uh, back then, again, uh, people, I mean, uh, Richard Gaspari replaced in second. Richard Gaspari is a dude with with terrible, terrible genetics, terrible insertions, no muscle bellies, no uh, muscle separation. The back sucked. He was blocky, yet he was placed in second to Lee Haney. So, I mean, the level was not that steep compared to right now. But then again, as I mentioned, the prism you need to look into is that this guy never pushed his potential. And yes, we can compare him to Big Remy in, in, in uh, more than one uh, area. This was in the FIBO, actually. I think it was in the UK. And um, he came next to the reigning champion of, of, of that time, um, an off-season Dorian Yates, looking the biggest ever. You can see that his biceps were still... Uh, intact, he was not injured as of yet, and he dwarfed him senseless. He dwarfed Dorian uh, senseless, but then again, he never made uh, the jump uh, to the IFPB. You can see Jurassic uh, pulled the lead being absolutely out angled, so that's it. In my reckoning, it is the only guy that can be compared genetically wise, genetically wise uh, to Big Ramy. Because, jokes aside, um, anabolic chicken from Kuwait aside. Uh, what separates this guy, uh, these guys actually, is the genetic uh, exceptional gift they have. And in my reckoning, it might have to do with uh, myostatin deficiency, meaning these guys just don't uh, have it because you might consume what they take when it comes to, to those uh, pink uh, and yellow and green candies. Uh, baby, please, <laughs> you will not uh, be uh, uh, like this. So that's what's up. I salute you, whatever you is, on a daily basis. Here you can see an old picture, him dwarfing absolutely IFBB pros, Lee uh, Labrada and uh, Samir Banut uh, back in the 80s. Uh, baby, please. 
little brother was so small, but they called him the mass with class, mass with uh, class, right? Uh, he was the runner-up sometimes to uh, Miss Olympia Lihini for, for twice, I think, right? But then again, granted, his back was not loyal, right? I mean, in Lihini, you cannot have, um, you know, a weak back. And you can read here, I'll consume anywhere from 8,000 to 12,000 calories, baby, please, in a typical day, meaning on a daily uh, uh, basis, uh, uh, baby, please. But that's what time it is. He is uh, right now old. However, the king stayed uh, loyal. I think he is injury uh, free. He's well in his 50s, but still looking humongous. All right, so Big Grammy is uh, can be compared only only to uh, Vic Richards in my reckoning. That's what's up, guys. As for Big Grammy, you know uh, the biggest prospect ever. Um, all the gurus were running after him. I mean, uh, Dennis James and George Farah already had their hand on him. Right now, he is rolling with the technician. Uh, for the record, the technician, meaning Chris Asito, will do an interview with him today. Uh, and I'll be watching and hearing very closely because he's the only dude who can bring him dialed a little bit more conditioned than this. This was, I'd say, 94% of his potential. I mean, to be a miss on the Mr. Olympia stage, it at least to be, you know, 97, 98 when it comes to the conditioning, you know, no water, no fat whatsoever, a death look that you smile, but you know you, you're basically struggling you have the cheekbone showing like dorian yeats and when you walk on stage uh, it hurts you because the cushion the very cushion underneath your feet are just melted the only fat uh, staying in your body is the vital one and the vital organs uh, inside aside from that i'm sorry guys but these guys flirt with extreme extreme uh, low body fat that are tremendously even dangerous for, for for health a lot of them actually you guys don't know that but when the show ends they go back on stage and they take some oxygen and some uh, perfusion actually they will basically re-inject uh, water uh, to uh, and serum actually to uh, rehydrate uh, these guys that's the secret so switch you wherever you are don't forget to like the video and tell me what you guys think about it is victor richard a legitimate comparison to big Ramy or not even once bruh